Under IFRS, inventories will be measured at lower of cost or net realizable value or NRV. So NRV is the estimated selling price less the estimated selling and completion costs. If the value of the inventory declines below the carrying amount on the balance sheet, then the carrying amount of the inventory must be written down to the net realizable value. And where do we recognize a loss? Okay, we'll recognize a loss in the income statement. You can either report it as part of the cost of goods sold or you can report it separately. And under IFRS, if there is any increase in the net realizable value in subsequent periods, then reversal is allowed, but it is limited to the amount of the original write-down. Now, let's look at an example. So let's say the cost of inventory is $100, and this is the carrying amount on the balance sheet. And the net realizable value of the inventory has been assessed at $80. So we will assess in this case, what should the inventory value be for the coming period? So based on this flow here, so the inventory will be the lower of cost, okay, which is uh, $100. Okay, and then net realizable value is $80. So we'll take the lower of the two, which in this case is the NRV. So in the balance sheet, the inventory value will be written down to $80. So there is a loss of $20 there. Okay, there's a decline in $20. So that $20 of loss will be reported under your income statement. Okay, so there'll be a loss of $20 there. Now, in subsequent periods, when we reassess the net realizable value, if the value were to be higher than what it is now, which is 80, then we will be able to reverse the write down and uh, recognize a gain. So let's say subsequently, let's say next year, the net realizable value has gone up to 87. Okay, and that means there is a gain of $7 there. So we initially recorded a write down of $20. So $7 is still uh, less than 20. Okay, so we in subsequent periods, you can recognize a $7 gain. Okay, that means you have another $13 that you can reverse if there is a increase in the NRV. So let's say in the subsequent year, let's say if the value goes to probably $105, Okay, what we'll do is that there is a uh, appreciation of uh, $18 there. Okay, but we have already recognized $7 here. So we can only reverse $13 back up. So rather than increase it by 15, you can recognize another gain of $13 there. So that will use up all the uh, write down that you have recognized originally. Okay, so you can't really write down, you cannot recognize get more gain than what you have written down in this case. Now let's take a look at another example. So if the cost on the balance sheet is $100, which is the carrying value, and the NRV is $120, so it's cost 100 and NRV is 120. So we'll take the lower of the two, so the lower one will be the cost, which is also what is recognized on the balance sheet. So therefore no adjustment is needed. We will keep it at $100 and there is no impact on your income statement, right? So in this case, there is no write down. Now under US GAAP, it measures the inventory value at the lower of cost or the market. So the market here is defined as the replacement cost of the inventory. And this applies to LIFO and retail inventory methods. Now what you have to note here is that the market or the replacement cost, okay, the replacement cost has to be within a upper limit and a lower limit. The lower limit here will be the NRV less normal profit margin and the upper limit will be the NRV. So if the inventory value drops below the carrying value, again, we will write down the inventory carrying amount to the value okay, that is written down to, and the loss is recognized in the income statement as part of your cost of goods sold. And sub in subsequent periods, if there is an increase in the inventory value, reversal is prohibited under US GAAP. So take note of that. Now let's look at an example. So let's say we have the cost of the inventory is $100 on the balance sheet. The NRV is $80 and the NRV less the normal profit margin is $70 and the replacement cost is $76. So based on this flow here, we have the cost which is $100. The replacement cost is $76 and the lower limit here will be $70 and the upper limit is $80. So we have to make sure that the replacement cost is within these two limits. 
If it is, then we will take the market as the replacement cost. So in this case, it's within the range. So the market is equals to 76. Then we will compare the two. So among 100, between $100 and 76, the lower of the two is the market 76. Therefore, the inventory carrying amount will be written down from the balance sheet from $100. It will be written down to 76 that. So there is a decline of $24, which will be recognized in your income statement. Okay, so there will be a loss of $24 there. And remember, subsequent in subsequent periods, if the value of the inventory increases, uh, reversal is prohibited under US CAP. Now let's look at another scenario where the replacement cost is $83 and the rest are the same. So again, the cost is $100 here. The replacement cost is now $83. The upper limit is $80 and the lower limit is $70. So in this case, the replacement cost has exceeded the NRV. So therefore, what we'll do is we will just take the upper limit as the market. Okay, so it cannot exceed the upper limit. So the market is now set at $80. And we take the lower of 180, which is, of course, here 80 is lower. So in the balance sheet, the inventory value will be written down from $100 to $80. Okay, so the loss of $20 is recognized in the income statement. Okay, so it's very straightforward. And let's look at another scenario where the replacement cost is now 68. Okay, uh, the rest are the same as before, $100 cost. Replacement cost is uh, 68, this is uh, 70 and 80. Now, for this case, the replacement cost is less than the lower limit. Therefore, we will set the lower limit as the market. Okay, we do not take anything that is below the limit here. So with the market as $70, and then we'll compare, we'll take the lower of the two. So the lower here will be the market. So we will write down the carrying amount in of the inventory in the balance sheet from $100 to $70. So there'll be a loss of $30 there. We'll recognize that on the income statement. Again, a reversal is prohibited. And for the last scenario, let's say cost is $73 on the balance sheet. Replacement cost is uh, 76. This is 73. And uh, the lower limit is 70, same as before. The upper limit is 80. So replacement cost is within the range. So we'll take that as the market. Okay, and between 73 and 76, the lower of the two is 73. So therefore, no change should be needed because the carrying amount is already 73. Okay, so no change is needed and there is no impact on the income statement. Right, so using this diagram, okay, or if you look at it graphically, it's easier to understand, okay, the rules, okay, or the requirements of IFRS versus US GAAP.